Hello. Today I'm going to talk about something that fascinates me um, extremely. Reductionism. Now, when we talk about reductionism, what we're really talking about is kind of a philosophical idea. And reductionism really means taking something that might be really complex and breaking it down into individual pieces and then trying to make those individual pieces really, really simple. So for instance, we might say certain things influence your genes. You're a human and you have genes and your genes are going to influence how tall you're going to be or how this or that or whatever. Um, reductionism. We might also say, you know, you don't have this level of education, so you're never going to get a job that's going to pay over this certain amount. Reductionism. It's an oversimplification is what it is. And in the world that we live in right now, it's a very popular context to put things in. A reductionist philosophy. Because we live in a society and we live in a world where materialist Newtonian physics and ideas of every action produces an equal and opposite reaction are still the paradigm that we operate out of. And I know this might get a little heady, so bear with me. So if we're talking about about reductionism. What we're really saying is that things can be explained really, really simply, and we don't have to worry about anything outside of that. Anything that I can see, smell, taste, feel, touch, experience with my senses is reality. And the fact of the matter is, is that that's not reality. At least not reality as science understands it right now. Science, the, the cutting edge of science, and I've mentioned this in videos before, is in quantum physics and quantum mechanics. And in quantum physics, you have all sorts of phenomena that are unexplainable, like dark matter and, um, you know, spaces in between things and, and open chain sequences. And even in things like biology, like uh, junk DNA, you know. So there's basically out there there's a lot of potential all right and because we're so focused on reducing things into little bite-sized pieces that we can understand and we can say that we make sense of things when we do that we miss out on on seeing things as a whole we miss out on a holistic perspective of reality which is much more functional Okay, so if we're talking about individual reductionism, what we're really talking about is picture like uh, a watch, okay? And if we take one opinion about one thing and we see that as the true thing, it's like opening the watch up and taking a little cog out of the watch and then just focusing on the little individual notches going around that cog. Instead of seeing the watch for what it is, which that cog is a part of a functioning mechanism that all works all together. It works holistically. Without a purpose, it's just a little piece of metal with notches in it. Okay? And so, what you have to understand is that you have purpose. You're not just a piece of machinery. You're not just a piece in a machine. You're not just a function of the society that you are in or that you live in. We have a saying, you have to earn a living, right? If you're earning a living, what are you really saying? You're saying that you don't have the right to live. You have to earn that right to live. Do you see what I'm saying? So when we take things as a whole, we can see things not only from a more spiritually active perspective, meaning that every single individual thing has a certain spirit, has a certain connection to who you are and to the things around you and to everything else because an interlocked web of uh, what you might call like a 
reality matrix, okay? Or some people might call it, you know, a dimensionality <laughs> or like third dimension, you know, fourth dimension, space time, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But when we see that we are not the only thing and how we perceive one thing is not the only way that it is, when we stop being so reductionist in the way that we think about things just based on our individual experience at that particular time, we begin to open up possibilities for what may be. And we begin to see things in a larger perspective that's very, very important. Because if you don't see things in a larger perspective, your morality goes out the window. If you don't see how what you do impacts something else and how that thing impacts other things, then you're operating from a place of selfish, materialist reductionism. Meaning, I'm hungry, I'm going to eat this thing, you know, damn the consequences. I feel like doing this, I really want to impress everybody else, so I'm going to get a job that I hate, I'm going to work at it really, really hard, and then I'm going to buy this car because I think it'll impress people, and then, you know, when you're 50, 55, you have a midlife crisis because you've been living a lie. And the lie is that you are simple. You are just a simple machine, and you need water, food, air, shelter. If you're sick, you go to the doctor. If you want money, you work for a, a corporation. If you need something, you operate in this certain set pattern of ways, because that's simple. Reductionism, essentially, is laziness. Whether we're talking about someone like Richard Dawkins, okay, who only sees things from what he can prove and what he can see and say, this is exactly what this thing is, okay, which is false anyway. Um, whether it's that, someone who might be considered brilliant, but has no creativity, or if we're going to look from another perspective, you know, from someone who's just thinks that whatever they do doesn't matter and whatever I say doesn't matter and however I affect people doesn't matter because all that really matters is that I am a biological organism right now and I'm living my life and I'm doing this thing and that's it. Okay? If I want to hook up with somebody, I'm going to call them up and I'm going to make that happen and then that's it. If I want to, you know, feel better about myself, I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff. All right? When you simplify those things, what you're doing is you're actually limiting your options for what will happen in your life and you are making it possible for others to control you more easily. Because if you're convinced that things are not open and magical and that things are full of potential, then you start to get caught in a trap. And so pay attention to that. Pay attention to where that comes up in your life uh, that you don't care and that you're not, that you're reducing everything overly simplistic about everything. Okay. All right. So that's it for this one. Uh, next one tomorrow. I'm probably going to do a bunch tomorrow, actually, uh, for the new year just to get people ready. So that's it. I hope you have a good day and I will talk to you later. Bye bye.